Hey, Dane here. So I just got back from band practice and I was trying to think of what would be a good kind of shorter video I could do tonight. And I got thinking about arcade hardware. Now, when I, you know, I'd been into the retro hobby for years and years. And a few years ago, I discovered there was a whole group of people who were basically taking the guts out of arcade machines and setting them up so you could play them on your uh, TV at home. And when I heard about this, I was like, man, I have to get into this. Now, growing up in the 90s, you know, you never went into an arcade and, and didn't see, you know, a game like Street Fighter 2. Now, the company that made Street Fighter 2, Capcom, had some just classics back then. One of my favorites was Alien vs. Predator 2, and that was on the hardware called CPS2. That's actually this bit right here. Now, this thing you can actually think of really as an arcade console. This would go inside the cabinet and you'd plug different games into this so you wouldn't have to buy a whole new cabinet, right? You could just get a new cartridge basically and plug it in here. Now this is what the games, the actual arcade games look like. It's kind of a giant cartridge, right? Uh, this is one I got, I don't know, maybe a, a few months ago and it's uh, from the 19, 1940X series, you know, 42, 43. Um, they're classic shooters. This is one that I wanted to track down for a while. Now, the thing with the CPS2 hardware is the games actually have a battery inside, and if that battery dies, the game will erase itself. It will not be playable anymore. Uh, for a while, they hacked it and figured out how to put in hacked ROMs. It wouldn't need a battery to run, but recently they developed uh, a mod that you could put into your CPS2 games that would uh, de-suicide them and keep them... Uh, from ever needing a battery replacement. It was made by a, a guy named Undamned. And uh, I wanted to show you how to put one of those in tonight. It's actually a really pretty easy thing to do and it will protect your game uh, forever once this thing is in there. You know, I kind of look at it as, as preserving a, a piece of unique gaming history. So uh, yeah, I wanted to share that with you tonight and show you a little bit of footage from one of the games. All right, let's get our cartridge open. Now, you can see these things are really pretty big, so I had to kind of pull the camera up a bit. I'm still not sure I'll be able to get quite all of it on there, but um, by the look of it, this game has been opened up before. Uh, sometimes you'll see them where they have stickers over these screws here. Uh, I've gotten one or two games that had not previously been opened. Uh, that basically had come you know, like fresh from the, the arcade. And uh, in order to get into those, you kind of have to peel a sticker back. And uh, what I like to do myself is, if I am in that situation, I peel it back, pull the screw out, and then put the sticker back down. Now, to get into one of these games, you're actually going to need a Torx security bit. It's a, it's a star-shaped bit but it actually has this hole in there. Now, if it didn't have that hole, you wouldn't be able to get into it, so you do need to get one of those, but they're not that terribly hard to come by. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this open now, and that will actually let us see what motherboard revision we have of the game, or what board revision, I should say, of the game. And that will actually determine how we install our Infinikey. Now, there are like three or four different ways that these can go in. And we're gonna be looking for a number on here to, to sort of let us know how to do it. Now, these can actually take a little little doing to get into. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut the camera while I actually get the shell off here. And I'll be right back and we'll determine what kind of board we have. Okay, that was actually way easier to get into then I remembered it. Literally, you just start back here at this portion and lift up. Mine came right off. The clips inside didn't give me any trouble. There are little clips down here, but uh, I didn't have any issues getting that off at all. Now, we see that we have a B3646B-7. The dash 7 is going to determine how we install our Infinikey. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull, pull this motherboard or the board, excuse me, right out of here. Move those shells aside. Now, if you're wondering the, the culprit that can kill these games, it's this battery right here. That That is full of acid, and if that thing goes, not only will it erase the game, but it can also destroy traces. So it's definitely good if you 
decide to go ahead and get yourself a CPS2 game, I also suggest just buying an InfiniKey when you do so, so you can go ahead and future-proof it yourself. Now, the actual mod itself is this little guy here. Let's get this open. It's kind of this cool little, uh, little PCB. There we are. Still fresh. All right. So I'm going to snap one of these off. And I'm going to pull the camera in and we will get going. Okay, let's go ahead and get this game fixed up. Now, first thing we're going to do is get rid of this suicide battery here. We do not want this thing on here anymore. So that is going to be my first order of business. Fire up my fume extractor here. My trusty solder vacuum. I think that's nice. Oh yeah. There we go. Get that guy right out of there. Now lucky for us, this is a, a seven revision board, which means it's about the easiest install we can do. So we're gonna flip this thing over and we are looking for this bit right here, CN9. This is where we are going to put our chip in. Now, before we do that, we need to talk about how the chip works, what it does. So this is our InfiniKey. Basically, you can look at it as a hardware key. These numbers here, are gonna be the key that the game needs to run. And all we're gonna do is hook this up to that position on the board I just showed you. Now, the game won't run without the key. I printed out a list of the keys for all the games, and we are looking for, right there, 1944J, because this is the Japanese version. And so the code that we need to actually solder onto the chip is right here. So we will do that right now. And in case you were wondering, you can also, of course, double check which version you have right there on the ROMs themselves. Set that aside. Let's get uh, putting our code in here. So for NFFJ, that is 01011011. All right. Let's try to, actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this thing in a little bit closer. I'll be right back. Okay, that is about as close as I will be able to get that. So let's go ahead and get started, get a little bit of flux here, and I am just going to go ahead and do my key first. And again, that is 01011011. Okay, got it. I try to center that up a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna put it over here just a bit. Sorry, I did not have it exactly centered, but I need to get it close enough to my uh, fume extractor that it will actually pull the fumes away from me. Again, always trying to be safe when I'm doing this. All right, now for zeros, you don't do anything. For one, you actually go ahead and close the jumper. Like so. 
So zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. Sometimes you get a weird spike like that. That happens. I just hit it with a little bit of extra flux. That's <laughs> giving me trouble. Let's try this again. Let me scrape some of that away. That would technically work. I don't, I don't really like the look of it. I want it to look pretty. There we go. Much better. Much better. Now, you can see on the board, there's a little section there that says open for, I'm just gonna say revision five. That's basically what that means. So we have a revision seven board, not a revision five, so we need to close that jump. Done. Okay. So our InfiniKey is keyed up and ready to go inside our game. So let's do that next. Okay, so we are looking for this spot right here, the CN9, our InfiniKey. It's gonna go in just like so. Really, again, this is about the easiest version of this install. And the other ones are not much harder, to be honest, they're really not much harder. So first thing we wanna do Let's pick one spot to tack down. And just physically push that up into the correct position. All right, our solder is set. That is not going anywhere. Kind of wait for that capillary action to pull that down. Oh no, oh no, it's a bridge. End of the world. Hit it with a little flux. No problem. I'll pull that out of there. When in doubt, more flux. That'll get to flow where it needs to go. We'll hit each one of these pins individually. Get it to wet. I'm not sure what happened. I don't, I don't usually try to glob all that much on there. It's okay, we're getting there. Look at that. No more bridges. One more time just for good luck. Do each one individually. Make sure they're really good and in there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's see if I can get that any closer. Not bad. There is something so satisfying about seeing those clean welds. I love it. Let's get this game put back together and test it out. Oh no, I almost forgot. I almost forgot to show it. I always want to clean up our work our boards. Whole points to save it for the future, right? Let's make sure this is all good and clean. I hit it with that. That good stuff. That 99%, 99.9% pure isopropyl.
clean enough to eat off of. Okay, let's go check it out. Okay, moment of truth. I'll try not to get too much in the way here. Let's see. There it is. Always makes you a little nervous at first when <laughs> you just see that that green screen there. I had no idea when I bought this that this game is not a Tate vertical game. It's actually a horizontal one. There's a handful of shooters that are like that. A couple on the Neo Geo as well. Let's see what we get here. Don't expect me to be good. All right. I forgot this game because you have like life. It's so different for a for a vertical shooter like this. All right, I'll take it. All right, well, that was fun. Uh, you know, for me, getting to take an hour and future-proof a game, make sure that it's going to be around for years to come is really just an awesome uh, part of this hobby. You know, I love electronics, I love retro games, I love arcade stuff, so getting to engage with that for a little bit, for me, is a great way to spend an evening. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, I guess I'll do the thing, you know, always would appreciate a like and a subscribe and all that stuff. But yeah, if, you want, if there's any other aspects of this hobby that you're interested, that you'd like me to cover, please let me know. You know, I do uh, cart modding and console modding and, and all this stuff, and I'm very far from an expert, but I do have a lot of fun doing it. I'm always looking for new stuff to do. And uh, in the uh, comments section, I'm going to post a link to the Arcade Projects uh, page that has all of the information that I used to do this mod tonight. You know, there, it, Arcade Projects is a great community, great resource for this thing, and there's lots of that stuff out there if you look for it. So, uh, yeah, thanks again, guys. Bye now.